Hey guys, it's Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan. We're looking at a Land Cruiser Cygnus. This is a 100 series Land Cruiser, and then the Cygnus version would be the uprated version, kind of similar to the LX470 that is available as a Lexus. This one here is the Toyota Land Cruiser made for markets that don't have the Lexus. And so basically it's a very similar vehicle. Um, we do, we do, we, eh. <laughs> Apparently can't speak today. We sell a lot of the 80 series and 70 series and 60 series and a good amount of the 40 series But this is my first hundred series that I've actually purchased for export here And so this one was bought from auction for exports to Canada All right, so um Being the first one. I don't know an awful lot of the ins and outs of this I'm very excited to have a, a closer look these hold their resale value really well all land cruisers do um, since this one is a bit newer the price tag is a little bit higher than the 80, 70, 60 series versions. Comes with a gasoline 4.7 liter. You can get a diesel in these, but there aren't an awful lot of diesel Land Cruisers in Japan because at around the same time as the 100 series was brought to market, uh, they changed a lot of the regulations in Japan limiting the use of diesel vehicles. So this one here is a 100 series. They do have like a... Uh, a robust version and a regular version of the car and here in Japan we only got the 100 series not the 105 series and so we get for the first time ever a no solid front axle which is a bit of a shame but it's, it looks like a pretty excellent system it has air suspension it has pretty rugged independent independent front suspension on it and the vehicle looks like it performs pretty well has a low uh, low range gearbox so that you can power up the, those steep grades if you need to plus the four-wheel drive and the good looks of uh, I guess the Lexus or the Signet I'm not sure <laughs> I guess you could call it both especially when somebody put Lexus badges onto it so this is gonna be a post purchase inspection this one bought from the auction I'm gonna go over the auction inspection sheet and that's the original one that you can take a look at uh, look over the exterior interior and and all around it um, yeah, pretty interesting, pretty big. It feels quite a bit bigger than the 80 series. Maybe if it's only like 10 or 15% bigger still, that's a big vehicle for here in Japan where most of our cars are that size or that size. I guess the Defender is kind of small, um, smaller than people think that it is. But no, this one feels really big. Okay, so first off, um, the engine, it's a uh, 2UZ engine, that's a 4.7 liter, kind of the same family as the Celsior, Celsior engine, which is the Lexus LS400, known to be a reliable engine, and then with the bigger displacement, it's probably, probably a really nice engine, especially for the era from 2004. Go over the sheet quickly, it's a 2004 with 90,873 kilometers. It's an octagon 3.5 with an exterior D and an interior C. So I think that they should do C and C. The exterior is really not as bad as they say that it is, which is good. It's an eight-seater with original pearl paint on it. And then here's the inspection for the body and the inspection notes. And so on the body, there's a lot of really small damage on it. And then the big damage, there's an A3 over here, which is a heavy scratch on the side sill. A B4, which is a heavy dent on the side sill. And then the running boards on this car, not actually side sills. And then it has a U2 here that I couldn't find, and an A3 here that I couldn't really find. I found some scratches, but not something that you would uh, constitute as an A3. And the other scratches, A2, A1, A1, A2, most of these are small enough that they can be buffed out. And so I think that this auction, TAA Kinky, was a little bit, um, being a little bit picky with the condition of this one. Now the interior, on the other hand, is very dirty. It looks like it's never been cleaned and that is a bit of a problem because people usually keep these more expensive type vehicles in better condition and so it is uh, a bit of a shame but it looks like it's not wear in terms of damage you'd be able to clean that up okay so underside surface rust doesn't look like a problem to me electric folding mirror doesn't work it's this one here it doesn't go like it should the one on the other side does seat is dirty and seat is wrinkled because it's a leather seat um, interior dirty, interior liner scratched, steering wheel wear, exterior has small scratches in it, and the emblems have been changed, two Lexus ones. So let's do a once around and then I'll show you your damage. You might hear a little bit of wind noise today, it was unwindy all day today, and I took the microphone off of my camera because um, I needed to use the camera for my daughter's uh, graduation from elementary school thing, and then forgot to put the microphone back on. Okay, so body looks pretty good. You'll find Land Cruisers generally don't take an awful lot of damage to them. Part of it might be 
everyone else is afraid of the Land Cruiser, so it's very careful around them. That's probably not the truth, but uh, see these side sills jet out from the body a little bit, plus there's this big plastic piece here, so that protects the from door dents and things like that. Um, Otherwise, I think that the, the size of the vehicle has something to do with it too, because when you're driving one of these, you're gonna be a little bit extra careful because it is what you would consider a giant vehicle for Japanese standards. I don't know how it compares in terms of the other giant ones like um, Suburban or Tahoe or Escalade or those sorts of things, don't know. Uh, it's not actually leaking down there. That's just um, some of the coolant that came out when I opened the cap. So the front end is different. The Cygnus and the Lexus have um, two different Lexus-like headlights instead of the one bigger one that typically is on the 100 series. The grille obviously changed to Lexus. Pretty uh, traditional proportions on it. I like it a lot. I love Toyota trucks and everybody else does too. That's why the prices are so high. Quick look at the side panels here and they're good. And the condition of the paint also looks like it's in pretty good shape, which is a little bit weird. Usually what you would get is uh, a car that has a really dirty interior typically won't be waxed that often throughout the years. And that will mean that the paint is more likely to fade and Land Cruiser paint on all other generations is very easy to fade. Okay, we've got a garbage truck coming and I don't like getting hit by garbage trucks or any trucks for that matter, so I'm going to pull pull back here. Alright, so damage on the uh, side sill here. Here's the B4 that they were talking about. Dented right here, and there's actually scratches too. You would normally call this like a, a AB4 or a UA3, depending on the auction. Some of the auctions use different um, different words for that sort of thing. And on the side here, the A3, you can see scratches along there from somebody kicking the side sill when they were getting in, which was the driver's fault. Also, door handles have the scratches in here and a little bit of uh, just like dirtiness that needs to be polished off. And then the A3, see, here's the scratches I found. And basically nothing else. There should be a bigger scratch along here. And usually an A3 is big enough that you definitely can't polish it out. I can't see anything that is like that. And wow, look how far we have to stand back from this car. LX470 badges put on the back here, along with the Lexus L and the Lexus sign and a V8 and cool looking taillights and cool Land Cruiser style dual tailgate. I'm glad that they kept this. I think the 200 series also kept it too. And so easy loading cool looks and Toyota's spending money when they don't actually need to spend any money but as far as I know this was a vehicle that Toyota's making lots of money on anyway so it's okay for them to do that it says Cygnus here and then if you have these seats in place you don't get an awful lot of trunk room but you could either remove the seats or these seats can be flipped to the side as is typical in a lot of Japanese cars these ones go down here until they're flat and then flip up to the side and the whole seats would be able to slide forward before you do that. You get your own AC vents up there for the third row which is a little bit nice and I'll show you more from the other side. This tailgate unlike the 80 series is really easy to lift up. It's quite heavy in the 80 series and it looks like you get less room inside than a 70 or 80 or 60. Um, probably a lot of that goes to safety in a crash because that was about the time when cars started to get more safe. Open the door and wood trim. That's nice. And it feels nice inside. Oh, this part of this might be bias on my part because I love Toyota trucks so much. But it's nice. It looks Lexus-like. It smells nice even though it's really dirty. Okay. Sun roof and a quick spy of the front. And I'll come back to that. Uh, I don't really like, oh, the, here's what I mean in terms of interior dirtiness. I don't really like how this seat folds down. So you pull this thing and that seat goes forward. Now you can climb over if you're an animal and then go sit in the back seats that way. But really you want to flip it one more time. But to flip it one more time, you got to push this down here and then pull it up. Oh, 
Why can't I do that? Because it's bad design. You need two hands. Or you need to flick the right switch, Derek. <laughs> it's, it's this one here that you need to flick. <laughs> okay. You still need two hands to do it. And when you have to do the flip de flip you can't have any car seats on there for other kids. So, yeah. Otherwise, you get a decent amount of room to get in there for kids. An adult probably doesn't want to sit in the back there. But plenty of room in these middle seats for the adults. Kids can be animals in the back. And they get a little extra headroom by the look of it. Some dirtiness or scratch up there. Okay, flip this down. One. And, oh, got to do this. Got to put the camera down. Okay, so, that's pretty normal. Cup holders for three, plus somebody's old business card in there. A pillow for the sleepy heads, including grandparents, if they want to sleep. All right, and uh, AC vents up there. At the front section, I'm going to show you this. There's a little bit of degradation in this trim piece. Vehicle equipped with Lexus theft deterrent system. That's funny because they put that sticker on to make it look like a Lexus, like they imported one. Okay, memory seats. We get to play the game where we see who the last driver of the vehicle was. Or, in this case, they never set their memory seats. That's kind of weird. I guess if there's only one driver, you wouldn't need to. Huh. But yeah, very, 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 very dirty. And very, 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 very dirty. You might even want to change this floor mat because it would be a lot of steam cleaning to get that out. You also have some sort of a stain on the other side over there. Okay. Otherwise, the leather is in good shape other than the dirtiness. So the wrinkles aren't heavy, and the leather is a nice high quality leather, which I really like. Nothing worse than a Japanese manufacturer like uh, Mitsubishi and Nissan <laughs> with their bad quality leathers. Okay, steering wheel is a half wood, half leather, and then has some wear on the bottom section there. And if your vehicle is always dirty like this, maybe it's a dirty person. And dirty people wear out their cars faster. Like if you have dirty hands, that's how you get wear on your steering wheel. Or if you're wearing gloves. Or if you have a ring. Okay, so high gear range and low gear range, plus air suspension, so you can set the suspension height that you want. Plus you can do four settings for comfort or sport mode. That's very cool. Power and snow, or what they call second here, allows you to start out in second. And then heated seats for driver and passenger, very useful for Canada. AC is very strong right now, it is on the second to lowest, and it feels like medium or high for another car. Set on high, it's noisy, but man, it's gonna freeze my fingers off. Okay, it is kind of a shame that all of the AC controls are in this uh, unit here, and the audio as well, of that sort of thing. Because um, then you can't change this out. And it's in Japanese, and it has the Navi in there, which I don't know if you would be able to change it by uh, resetting the ROM. I just don't know. Every car is a little bit different, and I don't even know any cars that you can do that. Okay, so see this little thing that you hold on to when you're changing it? That thing is missing here, so... Yeah, I can't do it. Might need pliers in order to change that. And then you only get single zone climate control, which is okay in my mind. I really don't like the dual zone that I have in my car. This one here is um, mini disc. So there's TV. Oh, look, we're watching TV. Disc, mini disc, and AM, FM radio. Change the channel, seek the track, and volume here, tune, it's easy. What's this? Nothing. There's a nothing button here. Okay. Ashtray that hasn't been used, doesn't smell bad inside the car, and a... What is this? X differential? I don't even know what that does. I'm sorry. Rear vent button. Height control, you can see what your height of the car is right there. And I really like these gauges, and I mentioned in the other video 
the blue mark there is behind. Wow. I love it. Okay, so shifting is good. Has some cup holders here for reasonable size cup holders. You can take this out, but I don't know why you would ever want. Oh, I know. Turn this the other way around. Oh no, it's nah, never mind. I thought it was clever, but I'm not. There oh I see. Okay, you do that if your cans are smaller. Okay. Inside the dirtiness here, there is a place to store your stuff. A thing that you can take out. Again, I don't know why you would. Not a place for some more cups, but then watch this. Ta-da! There is a cool box. Now you thought you were cool because you drive a Lexus. Now you can have even more coolness in your life. Only keep canned food or beverage to avoid odors. Okay. And it's a little fridge. Or a cooling box. And a place that you can put multi multi discs. CDs or DVDs. Pop that closed. There we go. And the interior is good. You get nice, good visibility. You're up nice and high, so you can see things very easily. And everything's beige and nice for you. Okay, 99, 11 kilometers at the time of shooting this. Okay, and that's basically going to be it for our first time Cygnus. The Cygnus being our first Land Cruiser 100 that we've reported. Probably not going to be the last one. I'm sure that these are going to be popular once they get a little bit older. Okay, so that's going to be the end of the video. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.